Welcome again, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today we are going back to the final frontier in Palm Springs with two fantastic guests. And now's the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after this session, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as shop our selection of personalized autographs, all of which are available now at GalaxyCon.com. So without further ado, let's beam them up. Our first guest is an Emmy award-winning actor whose credits include One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Next, Taxi, and of course, the Back to the Future films. Today, though, he joins us to discuss his entire career and his performances as friend and foe in Senior Moment and Star Trek Three. Please welcome back Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Hey there. Hey. Hey, everybody. Hey, Christopher, how are you? I, I'm doing good. I, I'm feeling good, yeah. yeah. Glad uh, to be here. Absolutely glad to have you back. Uh, everything is good in your part of the world? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah indeed. That's, that's been the past 18 months for all of us. That sums it all up, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> well, Chris, it's great to see you again in good spirit and in good health. Thank you. You too. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. And our next guest, he is also an Emmy Award winning actor and director whose body of work includes T.J. Hooker, Boston Legal, and can presently be seen on the History Channel series, The Unexplained. Today, he joins us to discuss his performances as foe and friend to Christopher Lloyd in Star Trek Three and Senior Moment. Please welcome back Mr. William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is very talkative compared to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a... <laughs> Christopher. Yeah. So good to see you. You too. You too. Really. Chris and I have uh, had uh, close visions of each other in two very separated uh, uh, items. Uh, I don't remember the year of, uh, of Star Trek Three. Does anybody? Do you, do you remember? Way back, but before COVID, uh, there was a history. Uh, uh, Patty, you looked like you were getting some information. Uh, Trek was 1983, I believe. Okay, so 1983, Chris and I, uh, we met on the set. Yes. He'll tell because he has a very <laughs> exact memory of that whole thing. And... <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's see 83 is 17 plus 20 is 37 years later uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. We in a car wow, I don't remember how we the uh, first thing on the uh, senior moment was it in the car Chris or is, uh, it, is probably, that probably, probably that sounds about right <laughs> 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 so, uh, thirty-seven years later, uh, it's Chris. For God's sake, man, how are? You? And we uh, we we sit in a car, and we're in a car for quite a quite a few days mm -hmm. as all the car uh, machinations are being filmed, and it's Chris and me in the car talking and uh, reminiscing, yeah. and having a, a good time. He's a good fellow and a wonderful actor and, and a wonderful companion, Chris Lloyd. Uh, so between those two That's mutual, I assure you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> between the two elements, uh, there was, uh, uh, you know, he had gone his separate way and won all kinds of awards and done some wonderful work. And I languished in the swamp land of all of that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the train in the swamp, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you definitely, you definitely got there. Well, you always were there. Come on, let's let's be ready. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait too. So, uh, so you guys first met, and you were filming in 1983. The film was released in 1984. So you guys were filming Star Trek Three in '83. Um, so, or were you guys around during the infamous fire that took place on the set of Star Trek Three? Do you recall that? I recall it. Do you recall it, Chris? I have. Uh, this is new to me. I haven't. I haven't heard about that. Here, here, my remembrance of the whole thing was this: and we were shooting Star Trek Three, and I was contracted to be in a series uh, T.J. Hooker. I've forgotten what season it was in T.J. Hooker, but I was now on my 
summer hiatus from T.J. Hooker, which we planned the movie. But the movie went on a little bit longer. I mean, the the contract dates were like a day or two apart. So I knew that I had to finish the film and rush into filming uh, T.J. Hooker. And uh, I come in one day and uh, people are running around and uh, I, what's, what's wrong? There's, there's a fire on the set. It is, it's caught fire and we've sent for the firefighters. Immediately through my mind was, I've got to save Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> and, and if anything burns, there's going to be delay and I'm going to run into my contract with DJ Hooker. So I grabbed a hose, a garden hose. I don't know what I was doing there. And I rush into the set. Now, the, the stages are airtight. In fact, I have um, tinnitus as a result of an explosion set off by the special effects guys, but they oh. didn't open the door to allow the change in pressure when that explosion hit. Oh, wow. You get, you get a change in pressure in your ears, yeah. mm -hmm. and both Leonard Nimoy and, and myself have tinnitus as a result of that explosion. Wow. Those, those doors are airtight, so there's no sound that goes in. Hence, sound stage. On a, a sound stage, exactly. Yeah. Well, I always thought it meant because the stage was very uh, well built. <laughs> it was so well built that it caught fire. So now I run in with a garden hose, okay, in this enormous stage, and I see the fire. And I'm thinking, I can't be delayed if they're going to, even a day will, and I'm hosing down this thing while it's burning. The rocks, the, the foam rocks are burning. Wow. Wow. Within a few moments, in come the firefighters, and they take over. And they, so they said, what, are you crazy? Those those uh, foam, that foam is poisonous. Yeah. yeah. When it burns, it, 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 it gives off uh, toxic, toxic fumes. Yeah. But I didn't care because I had to make my – anyway, we did, and that was my, my little story about uh, – Wow. Uh, well, yeah, I, I remember. You had no idea what was going on. Well, I, I totally missed that somehow. <laughs> you were a great villain, though, Chris. Oh, I, I, I like doing that. And we had a, a um, historic battle at, at the end of the film. <laughs> yes. I know. Two older, two older guys going, I'm going to get you. <clears throat> and the, the stuntman take me. <laughs> yeah, the, the the classic Kirk line, I have had enough of you. <laughs> oh, was that on him? That was, that was on, yeah, that was I Kirk was knocking him. Hands. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah. <laughs> that was an invasive too, so uh, it's, oh my goodness. You know, our producers let me know we found a clip that, uh, let's go ahead and play it. Uh, Paul, why don't you go ahead and run this? I think this might be interesting. Let's play. I uh, I don't win. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> See what damn Sam Donaldson has to say. He, he, oh, we got no noise. We got no sound. False teeth. His false teeth are rattling. <laughs> Look at those fumes. Wow. Well, that was that was a good yeah. rose. Yeah, oh, because, my God! Yeah, because I know it was it was on the Powell Paramount lot, and a couple of things got taken down. And I remember, I remember when this happened on Entertainment Tonight, they did a special on Star Trek Three, and of course, all of us Trek Trek fans around the corner were glued to the TV screen trying to figure out because we knew nothing about the film. All we knew, we didn't even know the subtitle was uh, "Search for Spock," so we were all like, <gasps> "It takes place in alien world." Was that the the film was called "The Search for Spock"? Yeah. Well, that was it. We were trying to yeah. find him. All that yeah, smoke. that's that's the set right there. In all that smoke, we were trying to find Spock. Uh, look at that young man. Wow. Uh, good Lord. Wow, you don't see shirts like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, you do. They're in my drawer. <laughs> I don't get rid of anything. <laughs> uh, next time you join us, you got to wear that shirt. Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, again, as, as, as a Trek fan and a fan of you both, uh, thank you so much for Star Trek Three and your contributions to it. Uh, it's it's one of the it's one of the seminal Trek films. Uh, Chris, you played one of the classic Klingons and a uh, wonderful villain role, and you've played some pretty seminal villains in your career as well as heroes. But that one stands out right up there with Judge Doom, for whatever it's worth. Well, all right, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, also and then. He's also brilliant in Senior Moment, which is still in the theaters and 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 uh, can be whatever you do on, um, on digital streaming platforms. As a matter of fact, I think we do we do have the we do have the the trailer for that with sound. You guys want to go ahead and walk through it? A walk through it? Yeah. Too long for that car, Gringo. All right, let's do this. <laughs> I'm too old for this. I am hereby revoking your driver's license until you're fit to drive. Open the door. Uh, open the door. <laughs> Are you okay? Just getting a beer. I'm going to take the test next week. Pass it with flying colors. Wow. Mm. Oh, I'm so sorry. Artificial flavors, calcium phosphate. I am starting to salivate. You don't look like a bus guy to me. The judge took it away from me. Get out of here. <laughs> I want to show you something. It's a surprise. Wow. Get in. <laughs> She's a good woman. You ready to settle down? <laughs> What's wrong? You, hanging out with Mr. Artiste. I really can't handle this right now. This is not about you getting back your license to drive. This is about your license to live. What are you doing? I dropped my wallet. What the hell's wrong with you? He's with my girlfriend. That's what the hell's wrong with me. I gotta get her back. Well, how are you gonna do that? <laughs> awkward. Huh? Awkward. 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 <laughs> Now you want me and the car. That's my car! I've been an idiot. Again. One more time. What color pills are you taking? I'm taking blue. <laughs> uh, Chris, you really rock those hats. I hope they let you keep them. The, the uh, hats? Yes. Oh, I, no, I, I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> well, get get yourself some ones that look just like it because the, you look you look like a pretty cool cat in those. Oh, wait a minute, he is a cool cat. Yeah, well, he is, he is. That's but that way, people don't know. don't know about Chris Lloyd. He's a cool cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the so West Coast, here, <laughs> on the West Coast, it's um, it's a um, it's eleven o'clock. So I'm going to have a little snack while we're talking. Mm. All right. Please, please, absolutely feel free. Well, if you want, while you're snacking, uh, we, oh, I have one final question. Uh, both of you are Emmy winners. Where do you guys like to keep your Emmys? Where do we keep our Emmys? Yeah. Chris, uh, where do you keep your Emmy? On the front lawn. That's no, good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. In a room, it's got shelves, and they're all the shelves. Fair. Um, you know, getting the Emmy is very meaningful. We all sweat it out. Then they give yeah. it to you. Thank you so much. Then you go home and you think, where the hell am I going to put this? <laughs> is it a doorstop? It's got to be somewhere subtle so it doesn't look like you're... <clears throat> yeah, you don't want it to be ostentatious. And, they all, and over here is my Emmys. Yeah. No, you don't. You don't. Somebody comes into your house. You don't say, "You want to see Miami?" You know, you're more likely to say, "You want to see Miami?" Oh, that's <laughs> that's a Florida joke. As a Floridian, I appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. Let's uh, let's go ahead and hit our audience questions. If you boys are ready for that, let's roll our first one. And this is going to come from Andre, and while he wants to know what was the most enjoyable scene together in Senior Moment. Chris, well, I love oh, I love the driving scenes. 
Me too. Between, yeah, between us. Um, oh, the, the, the scene, we were at the, at the airport outside with all those pretty young ladies um, trying to dis distract you from from what you were supposed to Probably hmm? because they were always after you. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I shunned that. <laughs> the driving you, scenes were fun because, you know, no matter how quickly you're making the film, there's always a lot of time while they adjust things. So Chris and I are in the car. I mean, you're not going to get out and go someplace, so you, the, sh the shot's going to begin momentarily. So you start to talk, and I got to know this wonderful guy, legendary actor, and we just had a good time together. Uh, during those during those scenes, those, those days in which we were doing a lot of driving, uh, I got to know Mr. White uh, better than I had uh, ever before. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a treat. Absolutely, it was a, and a treat to see you in action as well. Again, again, the the film's gotten wonderful write-ups. Uh, everybody has sort of said it's it's a, it's a it's the first feel-good movie of the year, and I think we can agree. After the past eighteen months, we all need a little old-school feel-good movies, and <laughs> we really well, haven't I, had too much of that. Go ahead, my, my, my my wife and I were in Palm Springs just a couple of weeks ago. And there's an old movie theater there that's been playing it for some time. And we went and, and saw it, the whole thing, and it was kind of cool. That's wonderful. Yeah, people nice. really was, enjoying getting out of the house to see a movie. Oh. Which, yeah. and, and to see this film, which they, they all, all seem to really love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Andre, thank Hello. you. That was a great question. I'm sorry. I was just going to say a lot of the reviews called it a lovely uh, uh, film. Very funny, lovely film. Great, great. Absolutely. You're wonderful in it. You are too, my friend. Your relationship with the lady and all that just very, very compelling, very believable. And very. Thanks, Chris. Coming from you, that's a great comment. Hits your heart. Mm -hmm. so. What you got there, Bill? Chips and guacamole? Huh? You no, know, it's exactly right. It's a guacamole. Ah, there you go. Uh, like Christa. Uh, Andre, thank you. Great question to start us off with. What do we have next? And here's one from Matthew, and he wants to know, if you could travel anywhere in the past, where would you go? In the past? In the past. Where would I go? Where would you go, Chris? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a Shakespeare fan. I'm growing this for a Shakespeare thing. And I would love to be back in Shakespeare's day, watching him working with the other actors and rewriting wow. and doing all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. at the Globe, you know? Yeah. yeah. That would be a, a, a treat. That so, would be a wonderful <laughs> idea. Yeah. yeah. Have you come to see I the new comedy? Uh, what, what's yours? Well, I played uh, Alexander the Great. Whoa. And um, as a result, I did a lot of research, and uh, he was a quite an unusual fellow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was taught by Aristotle, and he conquered the known world, and he rode the black horse Bucephalus. And he had a lot of adventures, and he died prematurely. Of, we don't know what. We think it might have been malaria or something. But he was an extraordinary character. I would love to been alongside him uh, right uh, a, lot, a lot of people focus on his aspect as a conqueror and they tend to forget his managerial skills at a time when the concept of managing thing and logistics and everything else of, of his achievements were unheard of exactly they would uh the custom was when you conquered a city you raised it you 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 tore it apart you killed the people when you conquered his idea was, hey, join the Grecian club and just pay a tithe and and live, worship the yeah. way you want. So he was enlightened uh, in many ways. There would have been, it was the beginning of of the Greek civilization, really, and uh, would have been interesting. But on the other hand, how much easier it would have been to sit in the Globe Theater and watch Shakespeare work. 
Yeah. Uh, Extraordinary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Matthew, thank you so much. Great question. As for me, I always say I want to go back to the 70s. And I want to go to an old Squidile record shop and just buy an album just because it has a cool album cover. Well, you'll have that opportunity this summer. Yeah. Got with the Love, Death, and Horses. And there are going to be quite a few interesting people on it, including myself. Should be a great album. Uh, absolutely looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll, we'll chat again uh, as he gets closer to it. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll play a little bit of it if we're allowed to. We'll, we'll pull up that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> Thank What's you again. Called? What's Love. it called again? The album? Love, Death, and Horses. Wow. All right. I know. <laughs> it's an unusual album. And it should be quite grand. Uh, absolutely looking forward to it. Matthew, great question. Thank you so much. What do we have next? Here's one from Jody, and they want to know which was the best live concert that you've ever attended? Okay. <laughs> I guess I could have dreamed through the rock era, but I grew up around classical music. I was exposed to a lot of, you know, uh, significant classical people, violin, you know, et cetera. And my mother got tickets at Carney Hall to, to see, damn it, I'm trying to think of it, a Russian pianist uh, who was quite big at the time. And he gave a, a, a soul concert at Carnegie Hall, and the only seats that were left were the backstage, on the stage, kind of around the piano. Wow. Tobias Stoloff Richter was the guy's name. And I was pretty young at the time, and that was that was just an amazing, to be that close to him, and with a viewing of the everybody in their seats, and the, it was pretty cool. Wow. Chris, do you play an instrument? Did you or do you? I had uh, required lessons in piano, and violin. Uh, I've about two or three times over my lifetime, I've taken cello lessons because I kind of like it, but I never got beyond an elementary stage with it. Fair. Uh, I'm always um, I I I, lo I love music and and I never remember what it is I'm listening to, but the charming story that happened to me just the other day was, uh, or, or it happened a few years ago, but I, 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 I tell it. I have a grandchild who was given a, a violin. She's very young, or she was when she said this, very young, and she would play, they were giving her violin lesson. Three guys! And, the mother was, you know. <laughs> and one day, for some reason, they played a, an album of, or they played a recording of a violinist. And and the child is looking, listening, and she went, oh, is that how it's supposed to sound? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the whole... The whole range of music opened up to her. It wasn't the screechy thing that she thought it was. It was a, a beautiful sound. For me, um, you know, I, I never went to... Uh, it, it, the music thing is interesting. Uh, Christy, are you... Do you understand rock and roll at all and, uh, and rap and some of the more modern uh i listen to it and uh, i kind of like it <clears throat> but i don't know you know i'm not acquainted with it they're very you know i'm not a big you know i don't have to i, I don't listen to it much if it's on the radio or, or something like that i take it in but i i um i'm trying uh, in, in the recordings i've made up to now and the one that's coming out I've tried to understand and try and do it just to see if I can do it and and uh, do with any any um, uh, uh, entertainment value. What I discovered about rock and roll, for example, 
Uh, uh, by the way, the, the <laughs> Christmas one went number one. Uh, the blues album I did was number one in Billboard. Um, I did a, somewhere, I did a rock and roll number. And I realized what rock and roll was for the first time. And uh, it's all energy. It's all pulsing energy. So the appeal isn't the, you know, the words, but it is the energy. There, therein lies the magic for the young people in dance. And, well, I, I, you know, it's the it's the energy involved, right? And, and that's what I had to put out. Uh, I realized when I was starting to do this rock and roll thing was, my God, it's it's pure energy. Yeah, I, um, I, uh, my wife Lisa uh, had a son by a previous marriage. I met him when he was seventy years old, and he had this game. Uh, so, um, what is it, guitar? Oh, okay. Guitar Hero? Gu guitar Hero. Yeah, right? the little... With him. And, you know, it's, it's very fundamental. You st strike a, the right color, whatever. Yeah. And he got tired of that. And then about a year later, he goes to his mom and he said, Mom, you know, can I have a guitar? He got a guitar and he never put it down. And he's, he's uh, 22 now, maybe 23. He's teamed up with some of the musicians. They've got a, they got a Grammy. And no. also, I mean, he's just no. traveling. And it's just been a kick to see him with air guitar, then a guitar, and just evolve. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's... I'm uh, overwhelmed by the dexterity and the... And the ability, the dexterity, first of all, technical dexterity of the fingers of a guitarist or a pianist. Or, and then what comes out of the instrument. Yeah. The rhythm and the, and the, and the melodic line all at the same time. It's like, it's like magic. Uh, it, it is a magical thing to right. imagine. Isn't there? I mean, you look in awe at a great guitarist, for example. There, it's, or a pianist. Or a violinist. There was a there was a contest recently on PBS for these young musicians, uh, uh, violinists. There were fourteen final uh, semifinalists, and they all played, and they were all like fantastic, and they were vying for a prize. And then the one who won was incredible. Young, they're all eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and they right. were beyond brilliant. Just unimaginable. What humans, what's unimaginable to me, Chris, is not only the technical ability of the people fingering the the instruments and the and the melodic line that comes out, but the instruments themselves, how they were made, who made right. them, who discovered who, that, who, who fixed it that, <laughs> who thought of a reed being blown on and it makes a or a trumpet, yeah, you know, you know, who's naturally going to in a, in a in a trumpet or or, or hit a a note on a gut. I mean, how did all these instruments start? The magic of music is incredible. Yeah, very much so. And the other another another thing about that with music is that you the the, the old classic ways, classic instruments, and everything else. There's they're absolutely still around, and people who love and pursue them. And yet there's electronica. Music evolves with technology, but it never throws away the old. It's a it's it's, it's an unbroken chain. I mean, have you, you heard harpsichord music recently, or within your adult life? Uh, not very yeah. recently, but Chris, yeah, it's it's charming. Yeah, it's, I know. It's, it's the whole age, of the, of the age when the harpsichord was popular. Mm -hmm. Comes out as the uh, when they play the harpsichord, right? I know or, this. Or the um, what do I mean? The the, what's uh, the, name? the guitar. The no, the name of the instrument. Oh, the harp. The harp. Yeah. So how was the harp invented? I know, I know it was a it was a very very classic old one, um, and, and that was back when strings were actually being made of catgut, I believe. Who has an answer? 
<laughs> I have, well, I don't have an answer. I have a, a thought. <laughs> I, uh, that the shape of the heart, the way the strings are, is similar to the, the shape of a piano, you know. Mm. And the, but it was the other the, way around, wasn't it? The harp first, and then the piano? I may be, but there, there's there, there are similar. And but I who would have thought to make uh, um, the lyre, uh, L Y R E. Yeah, right. Is similar to the beginnings of a harp. Of a harp. Yeah. But you had to fashion this. You had to make a thing that doesn't appear in nature. A or different. And then you had to put cat gut or whatever there was they used to, i mean it was like you had to think this thing out in principles that didn't exist prior to the guy who ever invented it by thousands of years of thousands of years <laughs> of, of, of uh, all those cats being killed for their gut <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, I, I dabbled in the bagpipes in my teens. And no. I was just like, yeah, no. and of course, here's this thing that looks like a pregnant octopus of some kind. And yeah, so. <laughs> they have, they, they did the, 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 the bagpipes. I mean, you got a bag and you're whacking a bag and you got a pipe and you're whacking and you're blowing and you're whacking. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be the most. You're blowing, you're going, and then you're fingering. What the? And then your 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 crotch itches under your kilt, and you got to go scratch your crotch while yep. playing the bagpipe. It's crazy. <laughs> and that's music. <laughs> uh, uh, Jody, thank you so much. That was a great question. Took us a lot of fun places. Oh, uh, what's another one from Jack? Oh, with Mother's Day being tomorrow, what was the best memory of your mother? Oh, very nice one. Chris. Oh, uh, well, my mother. What was your relationship like with your mother, Chris? Yeah. When, uh, kind of, when she grew up, she wanted to be, go to New York and be, and, and sing in musicals. And the way, with where she was and where she grew up, that was verboten. Women where, did not. Go, where did she grow uh, up? She grew up uh, sort of in New York and and Connecticut. Uh huh. But in, in her family, you know, young women do not go to New York. No, to be in musicals. Right. It just wasn't the deal. When she, she went, she had seven children, a couple of husbands, and then when she got into her late thirties. Or 40s, she decided I'm going to do it, and she got uh, teachers and all that, and she spent the next 10 years singing, and she she sang in New York at some place, some concert hall. She took went to India and sang, and Paris and sang. Just no, okay. was she, was she, I'm going to do this. Was she a soprano? Yeah. Wow. And she and she had always been a musical fan, so she knew these arias from various op operas, and she just went and do that. No. My father, my father was horrified. <laughs> he just, what, he did didn't, Lloyd, he, what did Mr. Lloyd do? What what was he did for a living? He was an attorney, mm. and he just suddenly my mother brought in all these musical people. They're crazy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is like, what the F, you know? <laughs> What's with all these whimsicals hanging around? <laughs> Your mother wants to be an entertainer. Does she study singing? Yeah, I mean, she she knew the limitations, but she wanted, God damn it, I always wanted to do this. And now I'm going to do it. <laughs> How old were you at the time? Oh, um, 11, 10, 12. So, Chris, your mother went off to the to Europe and was a, was a singer in Europe. That's wild. And your dad's in New York being a, a lawyer. Yeah. Did you go to prep school and all that kind of thing in Connecticut? Yeah. Well, I went to prep school. Where did I go to? Oh, in New York State, somewhere, whatever. Upstate? Upstate, yeah. Hmm. So you had that kind of upbringing. Imagine we spent 
I don't know, two months in a car, and I'm only finding this stuff out now. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> or else you told me that once before, and I forgot. <laughs> 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 story. So wait a minute. So you got your education upstate New York, like, like that classical Connecticut thing, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you went to college preparatory school, you know. Yeah. Deerfield, Dartmouth, and, uh, you know, the very Choate or whatever they were. Uh, I went to a place called Darrow. And, uh, but I had no incentive to go to school another day. So, you didn't go to university? I don't, no. Uh, what did I, you do? I, I left high school, finished high school. I went straight to New York to be an actor, to the neighborhood playhouse. Wow. I know it. Yeah. What was his name? The, the great teacher there? The Sandy Meisner. Sandy Meisner, yeah. Yeah, he was, yep. he was phenomenal. Incredible, Deep. incredible background, Chris. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm still picturing your father just with all the theater <laughs> folks. His father, he's got glasses on, he's got a vest, yeah. he's got a, a chain for the watch chain. You know, yeah, and he, he, they used to describe him as as an Edwardian gentleman because they are because it was a little only yeah, shortly after Edwardian times. Yeah. Try to read the paper you, you with look a little <laughs> like your father. Huh? Do you look a little like your father? Uh, yeah. All all of my siblings, or seven of us, all resemble my mother more than my father. But there, oh, there is. When did your father is, have time to take the soprano wife and get seven children? Well, he he, uh, he shared that honor with my mother's first husband. I see. She had, I think, three I love or the way four. You put it. She shared. That <laughs> yeah. We were very advanced. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, wow. Well, so, so Bill, how about you? What's a what? favorite memory if uh, you have of your mom? You know, the older I've gotten, the more I realize how unhappy I was. As a child. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I had a really unhappy childhood, but I didn't realize it until I got well into my uh, daughtering age. Um, again, going back to my album, which is about personal experiences, uh, we've written a song called Tuffy, in which I describe in the song, I'm tougher than the rest, that kind of thing, because I had a fight every day. Uh, I'm Jewish. And I got beat up in these schools every day. Two, three guys would put, try to beat me up, and I had to fight back. And, wow. and every day, and I got pummeled, and I got and and uh, and ostracized. Uh, and uh, it was a it was a. And then I wanted to be an actor and a football player. So the football player said, "What are you? You're an actor." And the actor said, "You're a football player." It was it was a it was a strange amalgam of disparate things that. I realize looking back now that I was not the happiest of children and I didn't, my parents didn't quite understand. My father was very, was very uh, Germanic and severe, mm. but loving. And my mother was, she wanted to be an actress. She wanted to be like your mother, a singer. She wanted to be an actress. So she was out there being an actress, really, uh, not being an actress, but you know, people who want to be and, and don't. Like, right. oh, I'll do that. I might do that. Okay. Um, so I had to take care of myself a lot. Uh, Fair. Understandable. Understandable. Jack, thank you. Great question. And a reminder to our audience, if you would like to chat with our guests like I am now or purchase a personalized autograph, you can sign up at galaxycon.com. I think we have time for one more. So let's see if we can go out on a really fun one. Here's one from Tracy. Ooh, have you one? What would you like to be remembered for? Christopher, you go. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess uh, that was rather Shakespearean about uh, that sound. Right? <laughs> <All right. laughs> <Yeah>. Forsooth. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that I, you know, did well enough in my chosen profession, 
be nice. I like to be uh, particularly with the lady I'm with now, Lisa, that I was a, a good husband, that she has no regrets, you know, the choice. I feel that that's, I'm accomplishing that. I guess that's, yeah, that's sort of the deal. Yeah. Um, to live as long as you're living, William? Well, I, I, I've always thought that when you're not remembered for anything. I mean, even celebrities or people in the news think, oh, uh, and then within days, weeks, yeah. months, they're gone. It's gone. You don't remember who, who the hell was that, you know? <laughs> Um, but what what I would like to be remembered for is uh, charitable works. We we put on Kathleen Hayes and I put on a horse show called the Hollywood Charity Horse Show every year. We did it last year. We didn't this year because we were afraid of the pandemic. But we will next year in the spring of of 2021. The Hollywood Charity Horse Show, which has been going on for 30 years, will renew. And over the years with friends and people that I know, and you know, maybe Chris will join us and, you know, and uh, entertainers that come, we've been able to raise around $500,000 a year for 30 years. Wow. So yeah, it's a while. So instead of, I've been to events where they, they I dedicate a million dollars. Wow, a million dollars. But the slow drip, drip, drip of a continuity of charitable things right and over the years result in a lot of money if you keep at it so uh, in it, it seems like my whole life has been that of enduring and going on and putting your head down marching on that's what we've done with the hollywood charity horse so we have we've taken people who were addicted and put them on horses and they recovered and people come up to me you know there's a the, the noreen uh, Shatner Foundation for Addicted Women. Then there's the uh, about 14, 15 charities that we give money to that are mostly children or or, or um, charities for uh, veterans who have the same ills as troubled children, troubled troubled soldiers. So we've been able to help those people. Now imagine what that does by helping one individual to go on. That person whether they're the worst person in the world or the best, they're softened by right. that good deed, and they're liable to go on and do another, do the, and do a good deed themselves. And that reverberation, that 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 thing goes on, the the butterfly effect. Wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that is so great. Yeah. I, I live by that actually. That is. That is absolutely wonderful. I know you've been, yeah, that is bad. You're like I said, you've, you've been doing that for quite a long time and you've supported uh, very other charities. And there have been some charities I know, Bill, you've supported that haven't made a big deal out of it. Hey, look at me, everybody. I'm doing this. So thank you so much for all, look, all look that you've done. Me. Look at me is the raw. I love the, you know, uh, as, as Sam Donaldson gives anonymously, you know, yeah. uh, uh, I, 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 there's no need. Who, who cares whether you gave money or not? It's where the money goes, where, where your benefit, where your, where your attention and your desire to help, whether it's money or, or time or. And you put effort into it. It's we, not just writing a check. You on the show, uh, my assistant and and I put on the show, and 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 our hands on on yeah. the show. And where can okay. we find out more about that? Uh, if people Horse want to org. Uh, we have silent auctions. We have, you know, donate the money. It goes, there's not a penny uh, between the two of us. There's no money given for, uh, there are no, no salaries given off. Uh, every penny goes to the charities. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Tracy, thank you so much. Wonderful question. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with William Shatter and Christopher Lloyd, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or purchase a personalized autograph, please head over to GalaxyCon.com. And while you're there, please check out our schedule of upcoming events just like this Chris, one. What a pleasure it was to discover a, a new place. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. got to do this again. 
Now, if we're in a car, <clears throat> if we're in a car together again, we know what to talk about. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We didn't go into just in time for Christmas, the film both you appeared in, but didn't share any screen time with. It was the sequel in, in Star Trek Three. Christopher, you had a ridiculous beard, and uh, Bill, you had that ridiculous beard in Just Time for Christmas. But that'll be one for another day. <laughs> so, gentlemen, as always, my absolute pleasure to serve you both today. Thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today, and thank you for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye bye, everyone. Take care. Bye -bye. A very happy Mother's bye -bye. Day to all uh, mothers of all ages, and take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.